It's early February, and Ireland's most sophisticated marine research vessel is heading into the open Atlantic on a journey that will take it to the very edge of the continental shelf. It's on a unique mission to carry out the very first detailed Irish survey of the extraordinary creatures that live in the eternal darkness of Ireland's deep ocean. One fish in particular may form an important part of the country's future fishing industry. Ireland, for the first time in its history, has both the manpower and the machine to carry out such a complex and challenging task. I think more and more society is beginning to see the value of the oceans. A fundamental part of the ocean is the deep waters of the ocean to the west of Ireland. We know very little about it. We need to understand it if we can protect it and look after it into the future. Ireland's very deepest waters are home to an amazing array of life. Fields of coral and strange creatures living over one kilometre underwater. But far above, the open Atlantic is not a kind place in the middle of winter. And this project will test the ship and her crew to the very limits. Throughout its long history, Ireland's climate and geography has been moulded by the sea. And for the people of this island, the surrounding waters have been at times a bridge or a barrier, but always a key to survival. Today, the largest part of Ireland's territory lies off the coast and underwater, some 220 million acres, ten times the area of the land. These waters are some of the most productive in the Atlantic, a vast undersea realm home to countless animals we know almost nothing about. We have some of the most important spawning areas, some of the most important nursery areas for fish stocks in the North Atlantic. It's up to us to protect that area. And it's not just in terms of fisheries, but it's in terms of protecting that environment so the future generations can look at it and know it's there and know it's not been disturbed and not been destroyed. For centuries, the only explorers of the deep waters off Ireland's coast have been the fishermen and women who pitch their skills against the sea to harvest a living. Today, Ireland's fishing industry generates half a billion euros a year and gives work to some 20,000 people, much of it in areas short on jobs and infrastructure. The pressures of modern fishing have resulted in bigger boats and bigger catches to pay for them and their crew. And fish stocks are suffering. Haddock, cod, whiting, herring and mackerel. Most of the well-known species will have to be carefully managed if a viable fishery is to survive. To try and hold on to the fish stocks that are left, the European Union has stepped in and imposed significant controls. And with Ireland's inshore waters already heavily fished, there's only one direction the fishing industry can go in their search for new species, further out and further down. Almost 30 years ago, the New Zealand fishing industry was in a similar situation. And they began scouring the southern ocean for new deep water species to help their livelihood survive. News began to filter out that they had indeed found something and the potential profits were very sizable indeed. Although the trawl nets that go down are enormous, large enough to totally enclose an articulated truck, they're often filled in minutes, sometimes just a few seconds. Anything up to 40 tonnes of fish dragged from the sea in a single haul. With bigger, safer boats, the Irish fishing fleet have also been searching further offshore. And in depths of almost 1,500 metres, they too discovered orange ruffy and other valuable deep water fish. It's a very sort of oval fish, it's very thick, it's very um, bony on the exterior, but once you uh, get away these bones and the very tough um, skin, you have a really nice meat there. There is a huge amount of meat on the orange ruffy, it is very good to eat, um, it is prized culinary fish. 
orange roughy can live to be over 180 years of age. And if you think back, uh, those fish would have been born when Napoleon had just died. The orange roughy quickly became one of the world's most profitable catches. And in New Zealand, the new income was a blessing to a beleaguered industry. But after a few boom years, orange roughy catches began to fall dramatically and alarm bells started to ring. The orange roughy are particularly susceptible to being fished because part of their life cycle, they aggregate on these big sea mounds very deep down to spawn around this time of the year. So if you think of a commercial fishing vessel coming along, lots of orange roughy aggregating to spawn once a year, they become very vulnerable to fishing. With bigger, safer boats, the Irish fishing fleet have also been searching further offshore. And in depths of almost 1,500 metres, they too discovered orange roughy and other valuable deep water fish. And while Ireland's fishermen were keen to go hunting, the problem was how little information existed on the orange roughy, where they live, where they breed, and how many are actually out there. If we want to fish them, let's know how many are there. Let's say how many you can safely harvest. To do that, we need to do very complicated and high technology acoustic surveys because they're so deep. But once we can answer the question, how many orange roughy are on these mounds? Then we can say how many you can safely take from the stock. And then we can introduce a management plan for the industry. And so for Ireland's North Atlantic waters, it became very clear there was a vital need for information about the orange roughy and the other deep water species that live so far beyond our shores. Something had to be done, and soon. Ireland's Marine Institute is the semi-state body responsible for overseeing the development of the country's marine resources and providing the government and the people of Ireland with vital information about how best to manage them. I think it is really important for Ireland, because of the position we're in on the west coast of Europe, to take the lead in doing this type of research and giving the baseline science that will allow us to manage our oceans into the future. For almost three years, the Institute's been working hard on putting together Ireland's very first detailed survey of its deep water species and the alien world that is their home. Research in deep Atlantic waters is a difficult and often dangerous process. To be effective, the Institute must provide a secure scientific platform over 400 kilometres offshore and then find ways of peering into depths of almost two kilometres and get results. That platform is the Institute's newest marine research vessel, the Celtic Explorer. The Deepwater Survey team will consist of 17 people from three universities, three different institutes and seven different countries, headed up by University College Cork. 30 days will be spent in the open Atlantic, right in the middle of winter. This survey is part of a research programme that has been going on for a year and a half. What we're trying to do is use techniques developed in New Zealand and Australia for actually assessing the, uh, the amount of orange roughy within a given area. And what we're doing is we've taken equipment in from New Zealand, this deep toed body system. And the other thing that we're doing, the other component to this work, is to actually send down a remote operated vehicle. And this is the first time we've used a remote operated vehicle of this nature. So there's great pride in it, and it's great pride to sort of see the job done. My job 